YouTubers, this is the Disposalist and in this video I'm going to ride around a bit. There's not much weather left, good weather that is, look at that, there's some blue, but there's not much left this year so I'm trying to make the most of it. Also I have a few more sparkly farkles to show off. <laughs> which I never know whether to be a little bit embarrassed about but hell if I like him who cares there's one very obvious one right in front of you there <laughs> so yeah I'll stop and show you the uh, new sparkle farkles at some point other than that, I'm just going to kind of randomly head-ish in the direction of Mersey. Let's see if we can see the sea. Let's see what we can see. See, see. those blue skies break through a bit more and that those dark ones over there don't leak on me another thing I noticed the other day morning well, it's not a really reasonably long ride I had a bit of a motorway section and uh, it was quite noisy. I had on not this Bell Bruiser helmet, which you'd think would be noisier. It's not exactly quiet, that's for sure. I had on a GT Air, a Shoei GT Air. I mean, perhaps the clue is in the name, the air flow is good, so. It did seem very noisy. I have noticed before that the GT Air isn't exactly quiet, but when I was leaning over to the side like this, I could tell that there was kind of low frequency noise, and I wonder if, though there is a dead zone here, which is lovely to take the pressure off my chest from this dark marlin screen, that the air coming over it, though it's smooth, seems to have more of a low frequency rumble to it than just a high frequency hiss that you get from just normal flat air hitting you. So I might try without the marlin at some point. Maybe I could just do without it at all. With a full face helmet and the marlin on yesterday though I was shooting along the motorway at <coughs> motorway speeds. And it wasn't uncomfortable. I mean, it wasn't as pleasant as tootling along like this at 50, but it wasn't uncomfortable. So we'll see. Fly screen or no fly screen. Oh, forgot that huge pot I was there. Get brief. So for this trip, I have turned down the recording level on the chin bar mic or rather on the Tascam recorder that the chin bar mic plugs into and I have removed the negative exposure compensation on the chin bar camera the GoPro 10 See if that looks good without any fiddling in, in editing. It's one test, aside from just having a nice ride. It's not a great view for you guys, the back of the van, is it? Sorry about that. Should just slow down a 
and let him get away a bit. I think you'll have a less interrupted view of the tunnel of trees, a rather pleasant tunnel of trees. Some beautiful British countryside. I'm putting more and more miles on my Speedmaster here. I have not decided upon a name for her yet, but we are falling in love. <laughs> more deeply every day. It's just such a joy to ride and great for my busted knee with the pegs forward. This is the little town of Tiptree where the famous Wilkins Jam Factory is located. And even if you're watching this YouTube from the other side of the world, if you've ever been in a big hotel or on an airplane flight or anything, you've probably seen, you might not remember, but you've probably seen a tiny little Wilkins Jam Pot into some breakfast marmalade or honey or strawberry jam or whatever they make a huge range and the little Wilkins factory has got a very nice visitor center well I say visitor center there's a little bit of a tight as a room they call a museum which is interesting nonetheless but there's a nice cafe and a shop with all of their stuff and really good stuff I highly recommend a drop-in hardly a, a day's entertainment for the family but certainly worth a drop in for anyone if you fancy some cream teas and scones with the best jam in the world so that was the little town of Tiptree jam factory coming up on our right not those flats, though I think they were originally buildings for the uh, people related to the jam factory. I might just take a little ride in, I could do that for you. I'll do that for you, just so you can have a look. It's nothing exciting. But... Sorry, Mr. Skipman. The tree jams! Lots of fields full of fruit. Over to the left, Ooh, look at those blue skies and a little bit of sunshine just to light up the jam factory for you. around the car park. Did know I hadn't noticed those before? Some original classic farming equipment. And the shop is just in there. And over the other side they've got a little garden and obviously some inside area as well where you can have your cup of tea and a scone and some jam. So that's the tip for jam factory. Shan't be stopping today but uh, I do drop in every now and again. I wish I could tell you the smell as I went round the car parks. Fantastic hot marmalade, basically. Oh, they're obviously on a marmalade thing today because that's oh beautiful smell. Citrus, orange marmalade. That's oh, lovely. Anyway, it's the jam factory. What were we doing? Oh yes, off to the seaside. He's expecting bad weather. If I get tiddled on, tiddled, tiddled, tiddled. If I get tiddled on, uh, just an excuse for me to give her a good polish later.
mine's breakthrough. I appreciate your efforts. Don't give up now. Why does it say Mersey left? That doesn't seem familiar. I'm pretty sure you can get to it another way because I have before, but what the hell? I'll follow the signposts because I don't really care what route I take, to be honest. And this is a nice new road. This is one clearly they laid properly and didn't use the old spit and grit technique that kills motorcyclists. I possibly exaggerate there, I've, I've not heard of anyone coming off in those great big piles of grit that that technique leaves behind, but I know damn well it feels dangerous to me. Hello sheep. I'll try and go back via Abbotton Reservoir, it's a nice little view. Then again, I doubt the camera battery will last that long. Next time I'll come that way instead. Look at that corn. And listen to the way I say corn. You'd never know I was brought up in Gloucestershire. Forward following these. I'm going to let them get away. What beautiful grasses. Ugly scaffolding. <laughs> oh well. Kind of everything. So I wonder how this camera is managing with a mix of blue and white fluffy clouds and grey but still quite bright with the sun behind it. It's a good experimental bright for the camera if not entirely pleasant for that reason. So here we are at the Strood. This is the land bridge that takes you to Mersey Island. It's not really an island, it's one of those where the Strood here at high tide can be uh, cut off so it counts as an island sometimes, you know. I certainly have been caught by that before. I've been on the other side and not checked my tide times and ended up stuck on the island. But hey, you can just go back and have a coffee, come down a couple of hours later and the strood will be all covered in seawater but passable. to give you the view but still be looking ahead as well. My problem these days with doing that is uh, I can look out of the corner of my eyes to look ahead obviously but but I have to use glasses these days and looking out of the corner of my glasses you can't see an awful lot. It's not ideal. The 360 cam over my shoulder would be uh, making it a doddle. I think that's going to be the solution for simple long rides. Well, I don't really care about having 
arse cam giving me a cinematic view of my little leggies. But, um, yeah, with a normal GoPro on the chin bar, it is, of course, pointing where my face is pointing. So not unusual for Mersey, I'm following a troop of cars in. I'll try and find a quiet spot. Get some nice footage of the bike with the seascape in the background. And show you my sparkly farkles. This is West Mersey. It's the more seaside towny type uh, part of Mersey. East Mersey is obviously just along the beach to the east. That's a little quieter. There are a few uh, holiday parks that way, but not so many shops and things. This is where the actual town and the more beachy beaches, where all the beach huts are. East Mersey is a bit, a bit more natural and quiet. Both are nice for a visit. East Mersey, perhaps better if you want to go for a quiet walk and take in the view and the air. West Mersey, if you want to buy a bucket and spade, go down and buy a ice cream on the uh, beach. So I know there is a parking spot down the end of this private road. There should be a view of the beach. I certainly remember parking up down here to go to uh, dog walks on the beach, but it's been a while. I can't remember if it's a good view. Oh, look, there's a ton of people parked there. And this is a bit of a game in uh, West Mersey, the search for a uh, parking spot near the beach. I do have sympathy for the residents, and I try not to annoy them if I can help it. There are official car parks at the other end and I might just... I might just go and grab one of those or I can ride up to the promenade that's parallel to the beach and uh, there should still be a picturesque spot looking out over the beach huts if not directly adjacent to the beach. So here are the beach huts. Wind farm in the distance. Power station over there. <laughs> it's not exactly the most picturesque uh, seascape in the world, but it is more than pleasant. See, there's a load of beach huts. Quite a few beachfront properties, residential, I'm sure one or two of them are the B&Bs for hire as well. Yeah, that's probably a good spot there, but I'm going to go to the end of the promenade and, and see. Little kids' playground. People parking up on the park here. in there. Let's go right to the end and see what there is to see, see, see. <laughs> this is the car park right at the end, public car park, and this is, um, this bit here is, yeah, there's a beach shop. This is a holiday park. There's public access. Because these beach huts are in the holiday park, no doubt, they're all delightfully painted. 
rainbow pastels all the way down actually makes for some lovely photographs from the beach and it's probably a good place for me to stop and talk about the bike let's just hop up this massive curb Ooh. Yeah, perhaps the back of one of these. I'm going to have a look down the end, though. <laughs> it's a big hump. Do you know, I've never been down to this one. I've always assumed this is just Holiday Park, but it looks like they've got a whole cafe restauranty thing going on. And I'm sure they wouldn't mind the public turning up. Must try that sometime. <laughs> you see what you get when you just have a wander. great. <laughs> that hump was big enough to get me. The Speedmaster certainly does have. My low belly. Yeah, if it weren't for that parked car, this would have been the ideal spot. But not so hot. With a big estate stuck there, so I'm going to head back. Oh, the sun's trying to come through. There it is. Good on ya. It's great. Stop that. Right. Where did I say would be good? Right now. Here's as good as anywhere, isn't it? So, here we are. My Triumph Bonneville Speedmaster 1200 2021 model. Um, there was a 2021 model that was actually the 2018 model, so confusingly. Some people call this the 2022 model. But there you go. But you've seen it before in a previous video, so I'm just going to point out the new Farkles first. Then I might briefly mention the old ones. What's that? That's not a chip, is it? No, just a bit of goo. Whew. I'm just going to point out the new Farkles and, uh, yeah. So this here, I don't know if you're seeing this in focus or whatever. Oh, camera. Mm, that's a point. Maybe I should use my phone cam for this sort of thing so I can see what I'm doing. No, I'm testing the GoPro. Okay, so... Here you can see Motone bar end finisher in brass, very shiny. I'm sure that will take on more of a uh, less shiny patina. The fuel cap there used to be a lot more shiny. I actually prefer it looking a bit more aged, really. So I'm sure it will lose its shininess, extreme shininess. And just to point out, another extreme shiny, especially against the black there. You can see the oil filler cap is a new one. Again from Motown. When I first saw those ribbed ones, whatever they call them, it's actually named Roswell, I think, after because it looks like a UFO. And I thought maybe that was a bit much. Um, but uh, no, I quite like it now. When it's on, on, I quite like it. It doesn't look quite as extreme. And you can see this one. That started off with a kind of aged look, a brass aged look. Now again, that's a Motown cover. Um, oh, while I'm down here I'm just going to crouch a bit these are the brass bobbins I've just put on I did have some Triumph ones but I could not resist these I know they're a functional item but they make that functional item look good enough to leave on I'm going to have to keep polishing it though because it's going to get exhaust crap all over it just while I'm down here as well you can see in the distance there the brass cover for the um, valve brass valve cover I'd be amazed if no one steals that before too long. Um, you can also see there I've gold painted <laughs> the Cobra lettering and icon on my tyres. I thought that might be a bit over the top. You might think that is a bit over the top. <laughs> um, but actually I really like it. Now it's there. I love it. I think it really... It's what they call an accent and I think it's good. Now this badge... 
I did myself, <laughs> which is why the corner's peeling up. I'm going to have to put some more sticky on that, aren't I? Um, this badge I did myself as an experiment. I didn't like the original was black lettering on white. I wasn't too fond. This I spray painted and then used a pen, a gold pen. So it's a bit of a lumpy job. It's difficult. The gold pen was difficult to work with. Um, but it's done what I wanted, which was to see if I liked it like that. So eventually now, if I find somebody who does it properly, I'll get them to do it properly, perhaps. So here, man, that's a bit of bling, but I could not resist it. They didn't have them when I first started putting diddly bits on my bike. But that brass one is a new thing, and I couldn't resist putting that on. Um, I didn't like the one, you know, the standard one with, with the instructions on. <sighs> is a, a bit of an ugly thing. So the matching bar and finiture, matching cover there, obviously matching bobbin, matching tire stuff. What else have I done? Of course, the marlin screen, the dark marlin. Um, marlin. Yeah, I'm going to try without. I'm going to do more of a test and a bit of a comparative to with and without. Another thing I keep forgetting to mention down here is uh, Pyramid Plastics fender extender that is doing a reasonable job. You can see there is crap sprayed up the radiator still, but certainly I think less than there would be. And I don't mind long fenders and the fashion for short fenders, I understand. It looks cool. But I actually quite like the long fender classic look, so quite happy to uh, have those long fenders and be practical in that regard. Is that everything? I mean, I put this on because I was definitely causing scratches on the tank. Oh, man, I've made a mess in there, haven't I? What was that that landed on it? Something sticky. Just some jam from the factory, maybe? Um, what else have I done? Oh, yes, the razors here. These are Motown razors I bought when I got the T100. Uh, the T100 obviously was a bit more of a sit forward bike, a more traditional seated position. And I've got little short stumpy arms, so I found those risers helped alleviate that issue. On the T100, they were good. And on this, I just thought I'd put them on anyway. This, the, the swept back beach bars are fine for me with little short arms they're great actually um, but with that as well I'm just even more relaxed I've got an even more comfortable upright position I've got more bend in my elbows um, you know so that's all good uh, of course I've spoken about these before I didn't I don't particularly like the name Speedmaster to be honest <laughs> that's not what this bike is all about at all it's an odd name as far as I'm concerned and of course it had the Speedmaster logo down the side there so I neither liked the name, nor did I like particularly like the logo. So those weren't cheap, £180 or so for the pair. But I do like the look very much. Mirrors, of course, are not the originals. The originals were the big Mickey Mouse. Very functional, and they did look classic, I must admit. But considering this is a cruiser, a bit of a more American style, these suit it quite well, I think. And they are actually even more functional. I always set mine up so I can see well behind me which genuinely means my shoulder is in this part of the mirror and because these are lozenge shaped and they're not tear shaped the bit that I actually use out here is isn't tiny it's a good size and this part where my shoulder would be I've put these um plastic but chrome looking uh blind spot mirrors so that all worked out very nicely the other thing I guess I've done is removed those reflectors that were on the forks there because they looked ugly as a big hairy butt um, and I'm really not sure that there's a lot of safety gained from having reflectors on there. I know it's good for people approaching you're at a junction and they're coming from the side but geez if you can't see that then I'm stuffed anyway aren't I? I've got to put, I may put on some black uh, reflectors you know the ones that work I mean that will work in lights anyway the rest of <laughs> this is obviously not original nor this but that's my mode of logging gear which i will go into more detail in another video so i'm going to head back to aberton reservoir no ice cream for me today it's looking nicer though to be honest i'm going to enjoy the ride um but yeah this is mersey 
must visit again. Look at that, she is beautiful. One walk around from this side, so you get the picturesque view. I've just noticed that these uh, beach huts have got stained glass up in, that's a really nice detail, look at that, stained glass up in the uh, front. And they're very nice, and a very nice bike too. Right, let's go before this camera runs out of film. <laughs> How old am I? It's the battery that's going to run out. Okay. So let's take another tootle along the seafront while the camera still has battery. It's a lovely day for it actually. I adore days like this. If it weren't for the weather being so unpredictable at this time of year, it would be my favourite time of year for riding, to be honest. There's where you get your chips and ice cream for the beach. Two Sugars Cafe. Cafe? Gosh, I'm posh. Pretty sure that's been revamped over the years. It wasn't as uh, tidy as that some years ago. There you go, that's a nice view. But there you are, that was the West Mersey Promenade. I'll show you East Mersey another day, though it's much more difficult to get near. As I say, it's quieter, the beach. That's because there are no roads going down there, really. I'll probably have to ride into one of the private holiday parks to get anywhere near. But I'm willing to do that for you. I'll risk it. They may set the dogs on me. I may hit landmines that I wasn't aware of. For you guys, anything. Don't you just hate it when you're talking about that sort of thing and then you come across a funeral service? Nice. Anyway. Got a bit of a crosswind. As I approach the strood in the other direction, I hope you can hear me okay. Another thing I want to mention just before the camera loses battery is I've joined the Triumph Owners Motorcycle Club online last night. Bit of a to and fro on the forums, but I don't exactly know anyone yet. But yeah, I've joined up. So I plan to get along to uh, a couple of the local clubs and events. Uh, I'll try and see the, there's a South Essex one but they seem to be meeting around sort of Greys, that kind of area which is a bit of a way from me. My other option is the Suffolk Club which are a bit nearer. Uh, so I'll, I'll probably go along to both. And uh, they can enter into a bidding war for who gets me. <laughs> Or more likely discuss between themselves who they think will tolerate me best. But yeah, looking forward to meeting those folks. I imagine that there will be a good mix of old bikes and new bikes and old folks and new folks also. I explained on the forums in my introduction that I've got a bit of a weird background myself. So 
but yeah, that's probably an eclectic mix of people, given that there's probably an eclectic mix of triumphs. Chugga chugga chugga.